Hi, folks. How are you? Hopefully, uh, you can hear me and you can see something in your screen. Yeah, I think that we have Andrew also here helping me. Andrew, if you, if you can, if you can let me know if you hear me and you see something in the screen, that would be great. Yeah, OK. So I'm also going to type here another announcement. If you could just like the, the announcement I have just made with the question, can you hear me? OK, many thanks. So I will start then. We will start. So as you know, this module is uh, architecture and networks. You have uh, already uh, seen the, the network parts of the module. And in the remaining weeks, we will see the architecture part. My name is Carlos, Carlos Riano. And uh, I will be uh, the lecturer delivering you this, this part of the, of the module. So basically, uh, what we will see in these weeks uh, is as I have mentioned, the 50% of the module. So you have already done networks, with it, which is the 50% of the module, and now we are going to deliver the lectures for the other 50%, which will be which will cover the, the architecture uh, content. And then uh, in the last weeks, weeks 12, 13, we will see we will do the the, the assessment for the architecture part. So the learning of cons of this uh, part of the architecture part uh, will be uh, the ones we are going to see here. So we will see how to describe uh, the information and how this information is actually represented in computers. How those numbers, characters and all this information is actually represented in the computer. We will see that everything is represented in, in the end as zeros and ones in, in, in bits. We will also uh, briefly describe the internal hardware in which uh, a computer is organized and uh, uh, all the levels of, uh, of computer hardware. We will also see uh, uh, how the programs we write in, in a high level language are how those programs are actually uh, running a computer, what happens see, uh, from the moment I write my program until the, the program is actually run, we will see how, how this is done. And finally, we will implement uh, programs in a language which is called assembly language and we will see later uh, what assembly language actually means. So those are the learning outcomes. The book that we will be using is the one you can see in the in the screen. So there is a, an ebook and there is also a, a prime book. So uh, I guess that uh, given the current situation, the ebook will be the, the most useful for you. Uh, we don't we don't have time to cover the book, uh, the, the complete book, but you will see uh, in the next uh, slide which chapters, which chapters of, of the book we are going to use. Of course, apart from the book, you will have uh, all the slides, exercises, additional resources in the in the in the canvas for the module. Do you need to to have the book? In theory, if you attend the, the lectures with the with the slides I provide you with the recordings and everything, all the information will be there. If you want to 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 have uh, more knowledge, the, the book will be very, very useful. But in principle, uh, with all the information I provide you, will be enough to pass the, the module. So this is the, the tentative scheduling we will uh, uh, try to, to, to cover during this week. So the first in the first uh, week, which is week seven, the current one, we will do in this lecture in, uh, today an introduction to computer architecture. This is uh, I extracted from chapter one of the book I, I have uh, just mentioned. 
then the remaining of this week and next week we will move into uh, assembly language into the instructions which uh, actually uh, uh, which actually are the, the language of the computer this is uh, extracted for, from chapter 2 of the book and then in, uh, in weeks uh, 9 and 10 we will see a little bit of arithmetic for computers this is extracted from uh, chapter 3 then uh, in uh, week in the remaining of week 10 and the last week 11 we will see uh, the basics of logic design which is extracted from appendix A of the book and the final weeks we will have uh, an assessment uh, which will be uh, potentially the, the 17th of December. The information, notice uh, that the information here in this slide is wrong. So every week we will have a lab. So in week seven we will have a lab. This, this Wednesday we will have a lab, lab zero. In week eight we will have another lab. So we will have one lab every week. The labs will run similarly to the network one. Uh, every Wednesday at 1 p.m. We, I will uh, make available the, uh, a document with the information for that lab and you will have all the week to do the, the, the lab. I will uh, at some point post the, the, the solutions for this lab and I will also add a, a video recording uh, explaining uh, uh, how, to, how to do that, that, that lab. Okay, so remember that for any questions, you have the, the live uh, Q&A chat that we have here uh, in, the, in the teams and we also have, uh, we have uh, Andrew helping us to, to ask where all, all your questions. Apart from that, you also have the, the ticketing system that I think you are familiar with. So, and I will be using also uh, forms, for, uh, I don't know if we have used them. I have here a uh, uh, an initial form, so just to check that uh, we can use this uh, in a way for interact uh, with you. So I'm going to I'm going to to share the link through the through the, through the chat, and then hopefully. You can see the link in the chat and uh, now if you if you want you can access to that link and answer the the question which is uh, just a simple question this is just to, to test that uh, this uh, thing of the forms is uh, we are using is is good for for this okay i see that you are responding so thank you very much okay so yeah, I have seven, 77 responses. Uh, yeah, okay, so then uh, it seems, well, a couple of you are not ready to start, seems, but well, I will assume that most of you are ready. This is, this is what I see. I think you can see my screen now. So this is uh, where I see the responses. So whenever I run a, a, for, um, a form, I will just, uh, send you additional questions here using this this form system okay so it seems that we are then ready to start with the with the actual content of the of this module of this part of the module uh, today we will be uh, covering just a, an introduction to computer architecture so uh, as commented I will be using this book and part of the material uh, of these slides is extracted from, from that book. So this is the outline we will follow during this presentation and the first item uh, of this uh, outline is uh, what is computer architecture? So here, uh, as you probably know, computers are everywhere. Probably the most common computer you have in mind is a personal computer. This is usually used for general purpose computing. We can use a, a PC or a personal computer for everything we want. Then we will have some kind of specialized uh, computers 
such as server computers or supercomputers. And we also have uh, more recently uh, embedded computers that we can, can find in tablets, smartphones, wearables. I, can, I have here uh, one question for you. So what do you think is the, from these three types of computers, what do you think is the most predominant uh, compu computer type? So uh, do you think that uh, what uh, people buy more of or what people have more are PCs, are tablets, are smartphones? Again, I'm going to share with you a link to this form if I manage to find. So you have another link and I would like to hear from your opinion. What do you think is the most uh, standard or more predominant type of computer nowadays? Okay. It looks like most of you uh, think that the smartphone is the most uh, predominant type of, of computer. So in this book we have a very, well I think it's a very old uh, chart which only represents data until uh, 2012. Here we could see the trend that uh, smartphones were rising up, tablets were uh, going down and the PC was very low. But I have uh, looked for a more uh, updated chart. And uh, as we can see here in this chart, the PCs uh, have a constant rate, but it's very low. Then, as you most of you have mentioned, smartphones are very, very popular. And notice that the, we are here in 2020. This is like a prevision for, for the next five years. And then, see uh, if you can see here, there are an extensive uh, list of wearables uh, la, uh, like small watches and so on but we have also smart TVs we ha have also smart speakers which are uh, uh, also very popular nowadays and uh, yes as you could see what we could think as the most popular uh, computer the personal computer that was uh, in the in the in the in the early days nowadays we could see that everything has moved to embedded any kind of embedded computers so what is then computer architecture so in we have here a definition a formal definition but uh, what we need to 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 take in mind is that for us computer architecture is just uh, which components uh, and when I say components, I, I'm referring to the hardware components I use for creating a computer that I want to use for a given purpose. For instance, if I want uh, to create a smartphone, I will uh, need a touchless screen. I will probably uh, need a battery. Uh, I will probably be worried about the, the, the battery and that it uh, it uh, it has a lot of autonomy. I will probably think uh, about portability, that the, the smartphone uh, is something that I should uh, wear in my pocket. On the other side, if I'm thinking in a personal computer, then the hardware I will select, can, I can have more performance because I don't need to, to wear that PC. It will be in a, in a place I could uh, put there a higher hard disk uh, on, on all those things. So this is what we understand by computer architecture. You have here the, the formal definition, but you need to take in mind that is uh, uh, the, the, uh, how we select and, and interconnect all these hardware components in order to meet a, a given purpose. Okay, so the main goal of this model is that after, after you end this part of the model, you understand how actually a computer works, that there is no magic, that how actually once I have an application, how actually this application is translated and executed in, in any computer. It can be a personal computer and maybe device or, or uh, any, any other kind of computer. 
let's move on now to uh, the levels of computer of program code. So we have different levels for uh, for coding. Uh, the probably the, the most common level is the one you already know is the application software. Uh, those are uh, programs or applications which are with, with written in languages that uh, we know formally as high level languages that could be Java or C++ or these kinds of this kind of uh, languages. Then we have uh, another layer which is called uh, system software. Here we have uh, tools, for instance, the compiler which translates the application uh, code into uh, uh, what we call machine code, in co into code that can be understood by the computer. This layer also includes the operating system, which is servicing our code. It's uh, uh, this operating system handles the, the inputs from my keyboard, uh, the outputs of my screen. It also manages the, the RAM memory and the storage and also uh, is in charge of sharing all the resources of, one, uh, of a given computer between uh, different um, applications. Uh, it also schedules the, the task and uh, this kind of things. And on the bottom, we have the real hardware. We have the real processor, the real memory, the real input output controllers, etc. Et so I have one question here. I don't know if you are familiar with uh, C, C++, so I would like to know this. Let me know Put another quiz. So I have added another quiz. If you can please as well to see how many of you I don't see any responses yet. I don't know if you are with me or not. Okay, now responses are appearing. Okay, I see that very few from you. So this is what I see. Very few from you are familiar with C, C++. It doesn't matter. We are not going to see C, C++ uh, programming language. In some slides, we will have uh, some C++ code, but we are uh, not going to use that. I was just wondering how many of you were familiar with, with it, just to, to be aware of that. So, well, uh, here uh, in this slide, as an example, I have here a snippet of C, of C code. It doesn't matter if you don't understand it. We don't need the, it for this uh, module. It's here just for, 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 uh, for uh, completeness. So as I have mentioned, we have uh, three level, levels of program code. The higher level is what we call the high level language. And uh, it's uh, the most uh, abstract language, which is close to the usually close to the problem of the to the domain of the problem I want to resolve. It also usually provides uh, uh, the highest productivity because uh, uh, if uh, as I will mention later, uh, this kind of language is more close to the human language. So it uh, improves the productivity and we will also see that it also provides portability because it, it, it does not rely on a given hardware. It can, it can be run on any hardware. So the next uh, level of program code below high level language is what we call assembly language. So you can see here uh, the equivalent uh, for this uh, 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 high level language in C the equivalent instructions. You could see uh, these instructions uh, are what we call assembly language and we will see them in this module. So this is what we are going to focus in this module. Uh, which are, uh, as you can see the slide, the, the actual representation of the instructions of a computer. And finally, we have 
the, the hardware representation. So how these instructions uh, in assembly are finally converted into binary matching language into zeros and ones, which is actually the language that the hardware understands. So I want to show you here three benefits uh, of high level languages. We have uh, mentioned some of them, but I want to make it clear what which are those uh, benefits. So the first one is uh, uh, the one I have mentioned that uh, using these high level languages, uh, we usually use uh, English words, algebraic notation, so the programs look looks uh, look much more like, like text, like if we were writing. So this make uh, programmers think in a more natural way. That would be uh, one benefit of uh, high level languages. You can see that there are different languages depending on the domain and you have here some, some examples. Then the second benefit is that, as I have mentioned, high level languages improve programmer productivity. So uh, it takes le less time uh, to, to write a program. If, uh, if I'm using uh, a language which uh, requires less lines, so this is obvious. If I need to write one line instead of three lines, so uh, it's going to take me less time. So that's what, what I mean by productivity. So uh, less lines of code means much le less lines of code for doing the same means that a program uh, is more uh, productive. And then the third benefit is what we can see here is that programs are independent of the computer. So if I develop my program in a personal computer and then run it in a laptop or in another personal computer, it doesn't matter. These uh, high level languages will run on any computer. Uh, as we can, we, as we have seen, all, uh, all this task is done by uh, tools like compilers and assemblers that we will see in this module also. We have seen that once we write our program in a high level language, there is a tool called compiler which translates it into assembly language, which are the instructions we have seen. And then uh, there is another tool called assembler which translates the assembly language into zeros and ones, into binary uh, machine code. So I have here another quiz. So what do you think that is mo most used uh, uh, by programmers? Do you think that programmers usually uh, uh, use high level languages like C, C++ uh, or Java? Or do you think that the, the, the use of assembly language is more spread and the programmers, programmers mostly use assembly language? I'm going to share with you another, another form. So I have shared you another form with this question. Uh, hello, Carlos. Yeah. Um, I'm just a moderator. Um, a lot of the students are trying to access the PowerPoints on Canvas. Yeah, yeah. The, pro the PowerPoints will be available once I finish the, the, the lecture. This is usually because uh, uh, I usually have exercises here and uh, in the PowerPoint, we have the, the solution for the exercises. So I usually uh, uh, made them available after the lecture, but if they want to have uh, the, the PowerPoint slides before, 
uh, maybe for the next lecture I could just remove the solutions to the exercises. Okay, uh, that's fine. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. Okay, so it seems that uh, some of you have already answered. So this is what I see. So the question was, would you uh, think it's most use H? LR or assembly language? Okay, we have yes. Uh, the question is probably not very clear, but I assume that by yes, you mean a high level language. So, the uh, obviously the most uh, the most common uh, one is uh, a high level language because uh, of these uh, three uh, benefits I have just mentioned make uh, this uh, high level language like C, C++, Java, make it uh, very, very, very productive, very portable and very easy to, to program. And for this reason, very little programming is done in assembly language. Then you may uh, be wondering now, so you are telling us that little programming is done in assembly language, but in this module we are going to mainly see assembly language. So why we are going to to see assembly language? So uh, regardless of that high level languages are the most uh, used and probably all of you will uh, use a high level programming language and will never see assembly language. It's important to know how actually these uh, programs are translated into assembler and then into a machine code because sometimes for uh, any given reason you may be uh, uh, you may you you perhaps need to look in a closer level to the to the to the machine code in order to understand why a program is not performing uh, as expected or uh, why uh, or why uh, uh, when I run a program in a given hardware, it performs uh, in one uh, in one way, and when I run it in another, it performs in another way. So uh, this is this is why uh, the reason why it's important to 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 know assembly language. Uh, for instance, uh, we can. Uh, I would like to put you an example. So. Uh, I was uh, working for a for a bank, and uh, we were uh, using. A, it was not a C programming language. It was an extension of C programming language, which is called CUDA, and which uh, uses uh, instead of CPUs, it uses uh, uh, GPUs for accelerating uh, the the banking applications. So uh, we have one program that uh, sometimes. Uh, perform well and other times did not perform well. So um, by perform well, I mean uh, uh, it performed faster sometimes and other times not. And we realized that uh, whenever we comp recompile the program, the resulting executable sometimes was faster, but other times it was not so fast. And we didn't know why. So what we did was Okay, we show the uh, we compile the executable, we get the equivalent assembly code, and we saw that sometimes the compiler was placing uh, instructions in one order and other times in another. So the compiler was not uh, uh, was not working properly, and that was the reason for the program working better, performing better sometimes and other times not, and for for uh, for uh, arriving to this solution, we 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 needed to understood this assembly language. Uh, of course, uh, we were not programming the, the program in assembly language, but thanks to understanding how this uh, assembly language works, we were able to uh, to to find the problem and the and solve it. Usually nowadays the compilers are going to be uh, great. They are going to do everything better than humans and they are always going to be uh, fine. But 
maybe in certain situations uh, in which you need the maximum performance, the maximum reliability, you need to go down to, to assembly language and to, 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 to try to answer this kind of, of, of problems. Okay, hopefully that's clear. So let's move on now to uh, levels of computer architecture. So we, can, we have seen what is computer architecture, we have seen levels of program code, and now we are going to see the equivalent levels for uh, computer architecture. So the top level is similar to the, to the levels of program code. So uh, it's the application software, uh, a, a program that you may, ha uh, may have. Then again, we have uh, something called system software, as we have mentioned, this could be the operating system, Windows, Linux, whatever. And then we have uh, something called instruction set architecture. This is actually the assembly language that we are mentioning. Then we, ho we have something called microarchitecture. We will see later what, uh, what is this. And in the bottom, we have uh, hardware. We have the, the logic, the circuits, uh, uh, the real uh, hardware. Well, uh, the computer architecture focus on uh, the instruction set architecture and on the microarchitecture. Particularly on this module, we will focus mainly on the instruction set architecture, which could be seen as the interface between the software in the upper layers and the hardware in the bottom layer. So, well, uh, the instruction set architecture is just the set of instructions in assembly language that the, the programmer has available in order to program uh, a, a given hardware. So we have seen before uh, a little snippet and we will see in this uh, module uh, a lot of instructions for, for, a, for, a, for a given set. And this is what we understand by ISA or instruction set architecture. So the set of instructions that I have available for programming uh, uh, a given uh, computer architecture. And then the microarchitecture is uh, uh, something more specific, is uh, how actually these instructions are implemented uh, internally. We will not see this, this is more advanced, this is probably for level two or level three, but at least I would like that you know that there is something else in computer architecture apart from the instruction set architecture, which we will see in this uh, module. So all these abstraction layers, so we have uh, levels of computer uh, code, levels of computer architecture, all these abstractions uh, helps us uh, to make everything uh, easier, to make everything less complex. It, they, these uh, these uh, abstractions just hide, uh, hide uh, all the low level that um, uh, is very complex and sometimes we don't need it. Maybe uh, one time if we need, uh, in the coming back to the example I have mentioned before, we need uh, at some uh, in some uh, some day we need to know something about uh, computer uh, about lower level det detail. But uh, hopefully uh, we are going to be always in a high in a in a high level language and everything is going to be fine. So this instruction set, uh, what architecture, which is uh, a lower level from the high level uh, language is, uh, as I have mentioned, can be seen as something like an interface between the actual hardware and the software. It's something in the middle between my high level, high level language in C, C++, Java, and my actual hardware, the logic, the circuits. It's something in the middle. And this is what we are going to see in this model. And then the actual implementation of those instructions is how the hardware actually puts uh, into effect these, uh, these abstractions for, for architecture, the, these instructions or this high level language. So the final uh, uh, message will be that this uh, abstraction is used to simplify the design, to make things simpler to programmers. So now we are going to see which are the components of uh, a computer. So probably you could think uh, some of the components 
that we have in a computer. So uh, we need uh, the hardware in to input data, the keyboard, for instance. We need uh, hardware for uh, for watching the results. The, the screen will be the most uh, common one. We will also need uh, hardware for processing the data, what we call usually the processor. We also need uh, hardware for storing data, hard disk, the memory. So all uh, computers has more or less the same kind of uh, components. Um, uh, we could, uh, uh, for this model, we will assume that those components are the following one, the following ones. So we have input components, as I have mentioned, the keyboard. We have output components, the screen. I have also mentioned that example. We have also memory. And here, uh, this is probably uh, the two, uh, the two uh, components you have not heard about, the data path and the control. So those uh, last two components are usually called processor. But in this model, we will uh, say that the processor is split in uh, a component called data path and a component called control. This uh, kind of uh, 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 structure is usually defined or referred to as the von Neumann model. And it's very common. If you search for it, in, uh, it will appear. Uh, the von Neumann model is very, very common. You will uh, find different figures to represent this concept, but the final message is that almost every kind of computer has these uh, uh, five components. So coming back to the uh, two components that you probably have not heard about. So uh, the processor, or usually also referred to as CPU, Central Processor Unit, is composed, as I have mentioned, of one component, which is called the data path, and another component, which is called the control unit. So the data path is the component that actually performs operations on, that, on data. If I want to add uh, one number to another one, the data path will perform the addition. And the control is the component of the processor who te which tells the, the data path what to do. So it says, OK, data path now add these two numbers. OK, data path now uh, subtract these other numbers. Uh, and then I would, I would like also to, uh, to point out here that when we mention input and output devices, we have mentioned, we have said that input and output are two uh, components of the computer. This also includes the network adapters because uh, for, from, for, uh, by using the network adapters, we are communicating with uh, other computers and we are receiving input data and we are uh, sending output data. So this is something that usually we do not take in mind. We usually, as I have mentioned, uh, consider input as a keyboard, output as a screen, but uh, the network adapter is also uh, an input output uh, device, which is actually very, very important. Here we have, uh, for instance, a tablet, uh, an iPad, and you see here we have uh, some of the components we have uh, just seen. We have uh, the screen, which will be, in this case, is a, is a touch screen. So it's uh, the same screen, is an output and an input uh, component. Uh, where we have the battery, it's not a component. Then we have here the computer board, and uh, you see here that this computer board has the processor, which is actually all, uh, the, uh, another uh, 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 component of the computer. I have uh, uh, this uh, processor enlarged here. This is the uh, uh, Apple A5. So you see here we have uh, the processor data path we have mentioned, and we have also uh, here, the, the course, we have input output uh, uh, components. We have here mem interface for, for memory, another interface for memory. So we have here also video, audio, Wi Fi, which are also input output elements. So this is just to show you a real example uh, uh, showing that more or less all the computers, all kind of computers could be. Uh, 
could uh, could be uh, uh, could uh, will have the similar uh, kind of uh, components. So finally, we are going to see something that I think is important in computer architecture. It's called Moore's law. So Moore's uh, Gordon Moore uh, uh, predicted very time ago. I don't know if you have he heard about this uh, guy. So it, he predicted that uh, the the performance, the, the the computation power of uh, of of a, of a processor will double every uh, every two years, more or less. What this means for us? This means that uh, we can expect uh, that the speed and capabilities of our components. Uh, will increase every uh, two years, more or less. So we have see here uh, what Moore uh, predicted. So the red line will be what he predict, predicted, and the blue dots will be what has actually happened. So you see here we are in 2020, and he predicted this uh, in 1970. So you see that more or less what he predicted uh, is uh, is happening. So why is this important for us uh, from the point of view of computer architecture? So this means that if I'm designing a computer today, so you know the design process probably will take some time, probably will take one year, two years. So we need to be aware that in two years the computer I'm designing today uh, the processor uh, performance will have doubled. So uh, we need to take that into account. Otherwise, uh, the, the computer where we are designing today will be good if it was on the market today, but maybe in two years it's not uh, such as good because I have not considered that the processor will be double, doubling their, their performance. Okay. So here we have uh, uh, the summary of we, what we have seen today. So something you need to keep in mind is the definition of computer architecture. What is computer architecture? We have seen that it is the, the art of the or the science of selecting and interconnecting uh, hardware components in order to, to uh, build a computer which uh, uh, meets uh, functional requirements, performance requirements, cost requirements, things like that. We have also seen that there are different levels of program code. We have seen that we have a high level language, uh, uh, which is uh, the, the most popular one. Uh, it could be C, C++, Java, things like that. Then we have seen that we have something called assembly language, and which is composed of instructions that uh, the the machine understand the machine understand we have seen that these uh, instructions are what we are going to see uh, mainly in this part of the module the assembly language instructions and we have seen that these uh, instructions are finally converted to a binary machine code to zeros and ones which is actually what the computer understands so we will mainly be focusing on assembly instruction and we will see also how those instructions are converted to zeros and ones. Then we have also seen that uh, there are several uh, different uh, levels also for computer architecture. We have seen that uh, uh, those are called uh, instruction uh, set architecture and micro architecture. We have mentioned that we will mainly focus on the instruction set architecture and the microarchitecture uh, level, uh, we will leave that for uh, other uh, other stages. We have seen the importance of these uh, abstractions layers or levels in order to make the design simple. To forget about the the, the hardware and the low level details and focus on uh, the design of what we are implementing. And we have also finally. Uh, we have also seen the, the components of a computer, the five components of a computer, which are input, output, memory, and we have also seen that the processor uh, has two components, which are the data path and the control. 
the data path we have seen that is the component of the processor which performs the operations, which uh, uh, for instance do an addition, and the control is the component of the processor that tells the data path what to do. And finally, we have seen Moore's law. Uh, Moore's predicted in 1970 that the capacity or the performance of processors will double every uh, more or less two years. And we have seen that this is still happening today. And we have seen that it's very important to design for Moore's law because uh, the, uh, we have seen that uh, we have commented that designing a, a computer could take a lot of time, one year, two years, and we need to take into account that in two years the performance of uh, our processors will be uh, probably uh, would have uh, doubled, and that's something that we need to consider. So, what will we see in the next lecture? In the next lecture. We will uh, jump to chapter two of the book, which uh, is actual instructions. Uh, uh, the, the, what I have mentioned, the assembly language. We will start talking about the, these instructions. We will see uh, a brief over, overview of, uh, of what is an instruction set architecture, and we will start uh, uh, seeing some of, the, of these instructions. We will see operations for the for the computer hardware, and we will see also uh, operands of the computer hardware. So this is all I have for today. Many thanks for, for your time. And uh, this is my offer lecture. If you don't like something we have done today, just uh, let me know. If you like uh, some of the things we have done, also that will be a good feedback for me. And uh, remember, uh, for uh, the slides will be available. I will uh, make them available now. Uh, for tomorrow's slide, uh, I will uh, consider if I want to uh, to make them available or not. As I have mentioned, there are the the problem is that there are uh, exercises in the slides, and I think that if I publish the slides before, you will have the even if I remove the solution, you you will have. Uh, uh, you will not uh, try to uh, do the, the exercise while we are uh, here in the lecture, and that will be something not uh, beneficial for you, I think. So uh, tomorrow we have lecture, uh, on Wednesday we have lecture, and as I have mentioned, on Wednesday also at 1 p.m. I will make available uh, the first lab. As I have mentioned, the lab will be done uh, in the same manner as with networking. I just made available the document and you work on it and uh, at some point I will uh, make available the instructions and also a video uh, with the solutions. For these, uh, for these uh, videos explaining the solution of the labs, we have uh, uh, another uh, colleague which is helping, helping me. Uh, uh, he's called Tuan and he, he will help me recording these videos for the, for the, for the labs. So yeah, again, thank you very much for your attention. We will try to do uh, in, in, in terms of time the same as within this lecture. We will try to start uh, five minutes after the official time, and we will try. I will try to finish five minutes before the official time. This is something we usually do at Queens in order to allow you for uh, when you are in, on campus to move from one uh, uh, room to another and here for so. I think it's also helpful for you having like a break between one session and another. So again, thank you. Thank you very much for your attention and hope to see you tomorrow. Have a nice uh, rest of the day and see you. Bye bye. Thank you so much.